Welcome everybody. In this video we're going to review the Greek alphabet and we'll go over how I write them and how I pronounce them, at least in American English. So the first Greek letter is the letter alpha and alpha was used for alpha particles when they were first discovered because it was kind of like going X, we don't know what they are. But X had already been used for X-rays and so they used the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Beta was also used for things that they didn't know what they were and it turned out that beta particles are either electrons or positrons. The next Greek letter, gamma, was also used for things that they didn't know what they were and turns out that gamma rays are kind of like X-rays but gamma rays come from transitions in the nucleus of an atom whereas X-rays come from the transitions of inner shell electrons but they're both electromagnetic waves. The next letter is actually really important in biophysics and regular physics and it's the Greek letter delta. Lowercase delta, let's try that again, lowercase delta kind of looks like an incomplete 8. If I write it like this, I write like that, and if I completed it, I'd make an 8. But if you start writing an 8 and you stop as you cross, you'll get a, a good Greek letter delta. And in biophysics, we're going to use the Greek letter delta for a small change, a change that should, that really needs to be small. Uppercase delta looks like a triangle, and we're going to use that for a change that is not necessarily small. So it could be a change or in fact just a difference between two things. So a delta t could be a thing like a time, like the length of this video. Greek letter e, epsilon, can be written like this or like this. Basically it's up to you, pick the one that you like to write. Epsilon also gets used for the permittivity of a material and if there's a naught down here it's the permittivity of free space. Zeta is a letter that's sort of hard to write but it kind of looks like that and it doesn't get used very often. The next letter is Ada. Ada kind of looks like an N with a tail. Next letter you've probably come across in high school and it looks like this, Theta. Theta obviously gets used for angles but in biophysics we also use it for um, a probability and in particular the probability that something is occupied. So in that case it gets called an occupancy. Uppercase theta looks like this. It has a horizontal bar across the middle, a straight one. Greek letter iota doesn't get used much in science because it kind of looks just like an I without a dot. Kappa gets used for dielectric constant and I write it like this to make it look different from the regular English letter K. The next letter is lambda, and lambda looks like that. In physics it can get used for a line density, or it could also get used for wavelength, and in biophysics it's used for the rate of events. Uppercase lambda actually looks like this. The next letter is mu, rhymes with muse, the pop band. And mu is also used as a prefix, for micro in the metric system and it's also used for mean of a distribution as an average. The next letter is nu. Who nu? Here we go. It looks like this. Kind of looks like a V. Um, it gets used in regular physics for a frequency. The next letter is xi and xi kind of looks like this. Oop. How did that happen? Looks like this, xi. Kind of looks like an E with a bad hair day. The next letter doesn't get used very often because it really just looks like an O, Omicron. The next letter, of course, is the easiest letter in the Greek alphabet because it's easy as pi. Here's pi, my lowercase pi, I write it with a squiggle on top. And lowercase pi, of course, is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. And in biophysics, it also gets used for osmotic pressure. Uppercase pi 
looks like this and it gets used in mathematics for a product. Next Greek letter is Rho and the normal way that people write Rho is like this but I like writing it like that with a little tail on it so that it looks different from um, a P. And Rho gets used for a volume density. So it could be a density of mass per unit volume or charge per unit volume. Um, and in biophysics and in physiology, we're going to use rho for a mass concentration because it has the same units as a density. The next letter is the Greek letter S, sigma. Now sigma gets used in probability for the standard deviation. In physics, it gets used for surface densities. Uppercase sigma is written like this and it gets used for a sum. The next letter is the Greek letter tau and it's written like this with a squiggle on top to make it look different from a regular letter T and tau gets used in physics and biophysics where using a regular letter T would be confusing. So it's often used for like a time constant for like radioactive decay or RC circuits or drug elimination. Upsilon doesn't get used very often and the reason why is that it kind of looks like that and there's really it's very hard to tell the difference between this or maybe even a script V. So I haven't seen Upsilon be used very often in physics at all. Then the next letter is phi. One way to write phi is like this. Another Another way to write phi is like this. Same for, for lowercase phi. Uppercase phi looks like this. It's a circle with an I through it. So here we go. We got phi, 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 or phi, phi, fo, fum. Oh, no. But I have heard people call this either phi or phi in America. Um, chi looks kind of like an X, right? It has a squiggle on this side and a straight line. When I write X, I write X like this, so both sides are squiggly. So you can tell the difference between my X and Chi. Okay, Psi. Psi gets used in chemistry for the wave function, and in biophysics we use it for a dimensionless voltage. Uppercase Psi looks like this, and it kind of looks like the logo for Indiana University. The last letter of the Greek alphabet is omega and it kind of looks like a W and it's used in regular physics for angular speed. Uppercase omega actually looks like the logo for a really expensive watch. It's also used as the symbol for the unit of resistance, ohm. So we're now done with the Greek letters. Um, we've gone through how to write them and how I pronounce them. And I'm going to post this uh, page that we just made on the website for this project. And that's at circle4.com slash biophysics. And for this video and the PDF of the Greek letters, look near the top of the page for the link that says videos.